See, basically the source prerequisite to enter into this is because uh, if uh, if you are uh, already a manual tester or uh, some kind of an automation tester, uh, prerequisite for it is like uh, you need to know about the software testing lifecycle, defect lifecycle, and how to use actually uh, any of uh, defect tracking tools and all. So that is uh, your uh, first uh, first prerequisite because we are not going to spend so much time on this. Um, so much time on uh, this. Uh, these are the uh, prerequisites like uh, any different tracking tool also if you know because we are not going to show uh, all these things like how you track the defect and how you assign or like a HP quality center or anything defect tracking tool. So all these things if you know so it would be helpful for you to proceed with the course. And next thing is like um, what we are going to cover as part of this training that I'll give you and later on I'll give you the demonstration about how the ETL testing will be done in a data warehousing projects and all. Okay, so the first thing to understand um, is um, like SQL. So as you might be knowing like ETL testing is a complete process which will be carried out by using an SQL. So we'll emphasize more on the SQL first before actually stepping into actual concepts of ETL and all. So since most of the people come from the functional testing background and they'll not have much exposure to the SQL, so we'll spend a good time on the understanding SQL, what is databases, uh, what is SQL, what is a database, and we'll understand all those. And for this at least we'll be spending at least eight hours to understand what is an SQL, complete SQL parts, and uh, how do you understand each and everything that we spend for eight hours. And then we'll go about uh, understanding of the data warehouse, what is a data warehouse is all about, what is a data model, and uh, how many types of dimensions will be there, uh, how many types of tables will be there, and uh, as the tables are the basic units of uh, storing the data in the data warehouse, and how do you understand the data model, and uh, how to understand the data model as a tester that will uh, how to understand data model as a tester, those things we will uh, discuss. And uh, later on, uh, we'll go about, um, next thing is about the understanding of the ETL testing and uh, how to execute the ETL uh, test cases and what is the role of ETL tester in the data warehouse. So this one, we'll be spending at least close to 1.5 hour, 1 .5 hour uh, in understanding the 1.5 hour in understanding the um, uh, what is the data model is all about. And we will start with the ETL testing and ETL testing, so we are going to understand the different types of testing, uh, different types of ETL testing, how do you carry out and what are the different tools that you use when you are uh, performing an ETL testing in a data warehousing project. So in this, we are going to spend at least close to 12 to 15 hours and here we are going to understand how to perform a smoke testing. So as you might be knowing the different types of testing and we'll, we are going to understand about the smoke testing, functional testing and how do you actually perform a uh, performance testing and the integration testing or a uh, system testing. So these things we will understand in detail and uh, by writing, a, I mean by executing a test cases which are written for a simple project. We are, I'm going to demonstrate the complete case study of a project here. When we talk about ETL testing, we will execute end to end about close to uh, 15 programs or 15, I mean at this point of time I call them as a programs, but actual term is mappings. So we are going to understand about how to do each and everything, That for that we will be spending at least 12 hours in doing it. So it will take minimum of 12 to 15 hours, uh, which will be this, this part, we will be spending more time in understanding. So in the similar link, the next we are going to understand about the BI testing. So BI is actually a business intelligence testing and wherein in your data warehouse you will have a two types of modules. One is a ETL, ETL which is used to actually integrate the data from different OLTP systems into warehouse and BI testing is actually a reporting testing. 
So you'll have uh, various tools, so which will be used to generate the reports and all. Uh, that time um, you'll be uh, generating the reports and everything. So we are going to spend a good amount of time in understanding the how a OBIE will be used as a report, how a OBIE will be used as a reporting tool and how do you test the reports in OBIE in terms of uh, validating the data, in terms of validating the UI, uh, everything uh, which includes uh, dashboards and everything. So we will be spending at least three hours on this. And uh, so this is how we will actually shape up the course. And uh, we will spend, uh, I mean, uh, this is how we will proceed with it. So it's, it will take close to 30 hours and when we actually discuss each and everything. So this is a rough, ex, a rough estimate what I have given you. So, so you need not to worry much about uh, the SQL part because we are going to take care of the SQL completely. I mean, uh, whatever the things that are required in terms of a database, everything will be taught in the class and except the simple concepts like manual testing and everything. Okay. So that's how, um, that is a overall picture about this. And let me give you an introduction about what is the ETL testing is all about and what kind of testing that you <coughs> do it. So to proceed further, um, I'm just giving you the information like uh, you, all of you might be knowing what is the database is all about. So in your regular days, I mean, I mean day to day life, you'll be hearing about the term each and everything, but I'll, I'll just introduce what is the database is all about. So as you know, like a database is something that which is just a software package which stores the data which stores the data in the form of tables and all the data will be stored a table is nothing but a, which consists of rows and columns just like your excel so where you will contain a row and then the column it will be like an excel it stores the data in the form of tables and uh, so we have a various databases which are available in the market, right? So um, like you'll have um, databases like Oracle, so which is a DBMS. So in the technical terms, we call the DB database as a DBMS, uh, which eventually is termed as an RDBMS. RDBMS stands for a relational database management system because within the tables, I mean whatever the tables that we are storing the data, there will be a relationship which exists between the one table to the other table. That's why we uh, call it as a relational database management system. And we have a various databases which are available. Oracle 11G is one database and you have different other databases like MS SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, which is another database which you have and you have Teradata, sometimes, most of the times in the warehouse, you'll be hearing the term Teradata, where uh, Teradata is being used as a warehouse, and you'll have the other database, such as uh, uh, Sybase and uh, DB2, which is from IBM. So these are all the different databases and most popular databases which are used in the data warehousing projects to store the data. So this is a database and what do you mean by an SQL? So SQL is a language which helps you to connect to the database. So SQL is basically structured query language which helps you to communicate with the database in terms of adding the data to the database or deleting the data from database or modifying the data or retrieving the data from database. To communicate with all these databases, we have a universal language. So that is your uh, universal language, that is your SQL. So SQL is a structured query language which helps you to communicate with the database. So this is a language which is invented by IBM in 1970s. So which helps you to perform the operations on the database. We have the various classification of an SQL which we are going to learn in detail 
<coughs> when we start with the course. But this, for now, you can just understand SQL is a language which helps you to connect to the database. So SQL plays a very important role in your ETL testing process as well. So now we understand what is the what is the database and what is it SQL. So few people, I mean most of the people will get uh, confused about the what is database and what is SQL. So now we have the next thing that we are going to understand about the data warehouse and what is a ETL. So what do you mean by a data warehouse? So data warehouse is, warehouse means where we actually store the goods and all that is called as in general terms, we call it as a warehouse. Data warehouse means it's nothing but where we are storing the data. That's called as a data warehouse. So in the simple terms, you can term a data warehouse as a database. So it's nothing but the database. So when I'm building the data warehouse or when I'm storing the data in the data warehouse, I'll choose one database and start storing the data in it. So that is called as a data warehouse. So when you are building a data warehouse, I can choose Oracle as my data warehouse or I can choose MS SQL Server as my data warehouse or I can choose a Teradata as data warehouse or a DB2 or something. So a data warehouse is nothing but a database where we are collecting the data from different sources and storing in the form of tables which is used for analysis. So what kind of analysis you carry out on a data warehouse? So analysis which includes, you know, uh, suppose let's say as a business user somebody has want to identify what is the revenue that they have generated this quarter or if you would like to determine uh, what is the growth of your business from a month to month or what is the growth of uh, let's say how many employees are performing better how many employees are not performing better and all those things if you have to determine so that also will be determined that is called as analysis so you're going to perform the different types of analysis to understand about your business so for that reason we are building a data warehouse so before we understand about the OLTP, I mean before we understand about the ETL process, we need to understand about the two different terms which frequently used in the data warehouse. So one is called as an OLTP. OLTP is called as a online transaction processing system. Online transaction processing system, which um, online transaction processing system wherein which is uh, used for your daily operations so examples for your online transaction processing is e-commerce application like your ebay ebay is your one on oltp system and you can term amazon amazon is your oil uh, one oltp system where uh, customers will be keep performing the transaction a transaction is nothing but a, you can term here it as an order so uh, order which uh, or you can term any airline reservation system where we'll continuously booking the tickets canceling the tickets and uh, performing the daily operations on it that is also on OLTP applications so these OLTP applications will have a you know uh, these OLTP applications will have a, a data uh, which is in the normalized structure which is a normalized so I'll give you much details about normalized, what, is mean, what do you mean by normalized? And most important thing is it will store always the most recent data in the uh, database. I mean, it doesn't store the historical data. So practical example will be, suppose let's say you go and uh, check your any airline reservation system, like if you go and, check, uh, go and see, you'll not be able to find out what are the transactions that you have done in the last year or the before last year. All these historical data will not be present in case of a, your airline reservation system. It will store only the most recent data, maybe this month or until the last month transactions it will store. It will not store the complete list of transactions as a customer what you have done it. And there will be no historical data. Most recent data in the sense there will be no history information which will be present but the historical information is essential for a, a business users to analyze the data. So this OLTP systems does not contain a historical data. And there are uh, other characteristics also 
about the OLDP system, the data will be in the normalized structure. Normalized means, so in the simple terms you can call normalization is nothing but distribution of data into different different tables. So when you say normalized data, it's nothing but more number of tables are present. More number of tables are present. So these are the characteristics about the OLTP system. So these OLTP systems cannot be used for reporting, I mean because of some disadvantages which we will understand. 